Hello everyone, Scott here. I just got out of seeing Hellboy a couple days ago. Tuesday. It's Friday now. Hellboy. Yeah, not the 2004 one, but the 2019 one. Hellboy is directed by Neil Marshall, who did Dog Soldiers, which I love, as well as Doomsday, which I've not seen. And is a reboot of the first two movies. And that that's the, the core problem here. And it's not fair to it, and I'll admit that, but I'll, I do need to explain. The first Hellboy was a lot of fun. The second Hellboy was even better. And the third Hellboy we still want after 11 years. And when this movie was announced as being a reboot, a lot of people were upset because, well, why? You're making another Hellboy, why aren't you making three? And there was a meeting, the news came out from Del Toro, the director, Guillermo Del Toro, who said that three is not happening. We now know it's budgetary. They wanted, I think, a $130 million budget to be able to make it because it needed to be bigger than the first two combined. It was the trilogy closer, all of that. Without Del Toro, Ron Perlman was unwilling to return either. And at that point, reboot. So, we literally have a movie where the origin of Hellboy is told to us again. It looks like the like in the trailers, like, oh, they do it all again? No, it's a, it's a five-minute flashback. But he is in Mexico fighting a vampire, and then he goes to England to join up with a hunt group to face giants, and then has to fight this evil blood queen, who is from the 5th century, now returned, plaguing London. And he's, of course, grappling with his humanity, monstrosity aspects of being the king of hell who will bring about the apocalypse. So, doing a reboot like this, and doing some of that stuff again, really doesn't make any sense from two sides. Because the audience that this is for are the ones that want three, and therefore already know all that. There's an easy way to do this kind of thing where you do a soft reboot, where you do it like Hulk to Incredible Hulk, where you do it from Punisher to Warzone, where it takes place later, it's not a sequel, but you just move on by saying, look, this is what happened, here we go from here. Hulk talked about how he's been the Hulk for a while, because the audiences that saw Hulk are still around seeing the Incredible Hulk within five years, so we don't need to tell everybody again this is the origin. Uh, Punisher Warzone even talked about that, saying, look, a mob fight happened in the park, he survived, his family didn't, the past five years he's been killing mobsters and criminals. You don't, and that was it, like, that was a line in Punisher Warzone. In this, they do do the, the backstory bit, because they wanted to bring in Lobster Johnson and really establish things and, and do it, and it's not like retelling an origin doesn't work. Batman's had it a million times over, Superman even has it as well, Spider-Man also. But notice that Homecoming didn't do that. An Avengers or a Captain America Civil War didn't do that. They just said, here's how it happened. This is the story we're telling, because everybody knows that. We're not going to dwell on that. Now, at the same time, you can't assume that everybody knows that, because, quite simply, this could be someone's first. That's fair. But, again, when you're dealing with Hellboy, where the audience is still, to this day, 11 years later, saying, we want three, and you're going to provide them with reboot, you know what your market is. That's the main first problem. The other problem, unfortunately, is David Harbour, who has replaced Ron Perlman. He's alright, but he can't escape the makeup. Um, you look at the makeup effects from the first two, and Ron Perlman is very expressive in it. Like, there's moments like my eyes right now, where my eyebrows are up. There's moments like that, where he can actually fully act through it. I over-exaggerated there for that. David Harbour has trouble getting out of this, because his is always kind of like this, and even when he's surprised, his eyes are just bigger in the squint, because he's got like the big forehead. He can't power his way through it, and that could be a problem of the makeup. In the trailers, I did notice a problem where it looked like the mouth was moving almost like a Muppet mouth, and that his mouth inside was stretching against it, which is a cardinal sin 
when you do makeup because you want it to look like his mouth is the one moving. You want it to look like that's his face. It never looked like that. But in the movie itself, didn't really notice it much. So that's okay. And the biggest problem I have with the movie, honestly, is taking place when it does and not telling us about the adventures that he has had. Because he talks about when he banished Baba Yaga. We don't get to see it. When he dealt with a demon beforehand. Well, we see that. But he, he talks about all these different things, about all these different adventures that he's had where he's capable and handles it for the BPRD, the paranormal defenders that he's part of. And yet, the one he's dealing with, he comes off as incompetent because he doesn't know what's going on. When, at the same time, we hear how capable he is, but we never actually see it. Except for the one with the fairy and the iron. We get to see that one. So, he's literally supposed to be this great paranormal defender guy, but is, like, bumbling. Because the current adventure, he's not good at it. But that's all that we know. You can't just say, oh, he's really good in things that you didn't see, and then have him not be good and bumble his way through and still be successful, that's very, very Force Awakens, um, sorry, more Phantom Menace, where he just accidentally succeeds and no one really seems to question it. Yeah. Um, that said, there are moments where he's really good. I like the Baba Yaga scene where he, like, he knows what's up and he's just super cautious and kind of like cocky and dismissive about it. It's good. It's that's a fun scene. I like that one. The ending scene was fun as well. But a lot of the fighting, like the giant fight, didn't even look like it was finished being composited. It's weirdly focused and clear in ways that it shouldn't be and doesn't look right. It still is a fun scene, but you're just kind of like it, it takes you out of it by how weirdly meshed everything is. Um, also, the movie's dumb. Um, there's a scene where he gets attacked because they're going somewhere, and you think, oh, it's all this a ruse. No, the reason they're going there is still legitimate. And the, the attack still happens. And you're thinking, why would they do that there? Because, like, why would you set a trap somewhere where you know the enemy is, and you're doing this anyway? Avoiding spoilers. Like, it... it was colossally stupid. And then when you look at it, and you see what happens with them, and then the reason they go there later, that entire sequence didn't need to be there outside of the fact that you wanted to have Hellboy fight giants. Because he swings a big sword around in the trailer. Um, a half hour could have been cut if you didn't care about him fighting a giant. The entire opening where he's fighting a Mexican vampire in a wrestling ring could have been cut, because it has no bearing on anything else either. <coughs> We're down an hour at this point. And they just want to get Hellboy Adventures in there. I get it. Hellboy in Mexico, and all these different adaptations they want to do. But it didn't make sense, because we're at a point in this two-hour, five-minute movie where he's going to this coastal Irish cave. Like, he's looking for Luke Skywalker, like, and he's trying to find an old guy in a sarcophagus. You're like, what is even happening? Why is this happening? We're in Act 3. What is going on? Why are we going here now? This is interrupting everything. And that's probably the biggest thing. When he is learning about these giants and how problematic they are and the very issues that they have, and then someone comes in and talks about foresight, they trail into his origin. And it's like, no, no, we want it. You literally told us about giants but you're going to follow up with Hellboy's origin. That's not what we're prepped for. We want the giant stuff. Um, even the opening talks about this whole scientific weirdness, and then the Hellboy look comes up. Like, nothing that was was Hellboy. Like, you didn't introduce Hellboy in that. You introduced, like, the Blood Queen and King Arthur. Not Hellboy. Like, and then the very next scene is the, the Mexican vampire thing. Then put, put the logo there. That's where you put your logo. But the Blood Queen, I'll say that, Mila Jovovich was awesome in this. She's a lot of fun. She's also ageless, because, like, Resident Evil was over 20 years ago, and she looks very, very the same. It's nuts. I, I, what? Um, but she's doing a British accent in this, which reminded me of someone, and it bugged me the whole time, how her accent was. It's probably Beckinsale is who I'm thinking of, but just the way that she spoke was reminiscent of something, and I can't place it. Um, but she was great. She was a lot of fun. There were some fun sequences with her and the Pigman, the Kruog, uh, which was very well done. Um, and that, that's an important thing. Some of the effects were very good, and some were not. 
very good. Like, it, 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 it's very inconsistent. It's janky, it's inconsistent. If this movie was all there was, I'd be like, there's potential here to make this work. But when we've seen how to make this work before, over a decade ago, 15 years now, yeah, it's like, you, guys, you can do better. They did better 15 years ago. So it's it's a it's a weird one where I would normally be singing the praises and looking at the positives, and I am saying, look, if you want to see this movie, don't let anybody talk you out of it. You'll still have some fun, but it's kind of a waste overall in that this did not need to exist whatsoever and does nothing new. The tone isn't even that different from the others, aside from it being rated R, and they earn that R. They swear a lot, and it is very gory violent. Like, someone's head split open, and they're literally like, you can see the brain. It, it might sound like that's unnecessarily graphic, but it's more done in just almost like an over-the-top comical way, but not comical. It's just, that's what a demon would do when it does this. It's very matter-of-fact in that, and it works. Honestly, it, it, I, ha I have no problem with it. It earns the R. But it's not needed, so... That's that. I'll leave it there. Time's almost out anyway. There's not much more to say. If you want to see it, check it out. If you don't, don't bother. I didn't even need to see it in the theater. Bit of a disappointment, but that's all. Thanks for checking it out. GuiltyPlayerCinema.com, Cyclops Scott on Twitch and YouTube. I'll see you next time.